Deep in the ocean, dead and cast away Marina sends his burn in flames A million miles from home, I'm walking ahead I'm frozen to the bones I am a soldier on my own, I don't know the way I'm riding up the heights of shame I'm waiting for the call, the hand on the chest I'm ready for the fight and fate This is the Chord Dave. This is Chord's flagship DAC. It is $11,000 and this is the Hugo M Scaler. This is a $5,000 upgrade for the Dave and the TT2. You can use this with any DAC you like and I've got a dedicated video coming on this because this is a really interesting product and I want to talk more about that in depth. I will be talking about how it works with the Dave but there's a full video coming on that soon. I want to focus on the Dave for this. This is a very expensive DAC and you would expect a lot for your money, and you get a lot for your money. Let's address the first issue, the aesthetics. Chord aesthetics have always been questionable at best. The cutest is fine, it's sleek, it's fairly simple, it's a little bit out there, but it's not bad. The tabletop series, I don't like. That's getting too far into the territory where I'd really question if I want it on my desk with this candy ball aesthetic and everything. The Dave is just straight up weird. It looks strange, it looks like an alien dropped it off. Why has it got a square display in a round port? Why has it got these wavy dots? Why are the buttons balls that actually roll when you push your finger on them? It's... There's some weird design choices going on here. That's subjective though, and it's still built really well. It's an absolute tank. It's heavy as hell, and it's built really solid. This is all solid metal. It comes in a black version as well, and I think the black version has the same finish as the M Scaler. This one's a sort of brushed aluminium finish. The build is fantastic. The aesthetics are questionable. Let's have a look at the back. On the rear we have power, two pairs of DX output, which are BNC connectors but are not currently in use. This is for a future cord product. A pair of BNC inputs, optical SPDIF, AES, and cords dual BNC input for use with the M Scaler. USB, single-ended output, and balanced output. These are not actually balanced. None of the cord DACs are balanced. These are just there for compatibility. I will note, though, these are straight up the nicest connectors I've ever used on a DAC. I just want those on everything. They're amazing. Whilst we're here, we should do the M Scaler as well. On the M Scaler, you have power, BNC inputs, optical inputs, USB in, optical output, SPDIF output, and cords dual BNC output. On the front, you've got a headphone amp. Now, the headphone amp is okay. It's not a bad headphone amp. The problem I have with it is this is an $11,000 DAC, and this is an amazing DAC. This is an just okay headphone amp. And so, it's, pow it's powerful. This is, uh, this is the HD100S, for example. These are not too hard to drive, and I'm at about minus 12 dB uh, with the DSP volume control for listening volume on the HD100S. It doesn't have any trouble powering fairly hard to drive stuff. Uh, the Hyperman Aria go absolutely fine off of it. The Susvara are a bit of a different story, but that's just because those need ridiculous amounts of amplification, it can get them to sort of listening volume. But you really need a lot of power to make the low end on these sound as good as it can be, and the staging as well. These change a lot depending on what you plug them into. That's why I've got a speaker amp. A lot of people use Susvara and HE6 on a speaker amp because it makes a big difference. It's fairly beefy, but the problem is that the actual sound quality coming out of it is just okay. It's not bad, but it doesn't do this DAC justice. If you are spending $11,000 on a DAC or $15,000 on a DAC and upscaler combo, spend an extra one and a half to get a GSX Mini and be very, very happy. Don't buy this to use as a combo. It's a shame to use the headphone out that this has with a DAC this good. So, the build itself is phenomenal. 
aesthetics are questionable, but I'll leave that up to you to decide whether you like or not. Let's have a look at the interface. So you've got this big screen. I like a big screen, but it doesn't need to be this big. You've got four options. You've got PCM or DSD. Do you want normal or inverse polarity? High frequency filter. That's for if you are feeding it high sample rate music. And then a few display mode customizations. Four is just one, but it turns off after a while. And then volume and input. That's it. It doesn't need to be this big. I don't know why it's this big. And more to the point, why is it a square in a round port? That's the biggest mystery to me. Another thing which you'll probably notice in a second is after I've touched the controls, there you go, 20, 30 seconds after, it flashes off and on. The DAC is still running, it still plays music, but the display turns off. I don't know why it does that. I don't know if that's just this unit, but worth mentioning. Core didn't send me this. I didn't pay for this. These are being loaned to me by a third party who would prefer to remain anonymous, so I'll respect that wish. Uh, all thoughts and opinions are my own. I don't have to worry about upsetting anyone or any kind of bias or anything. And that's good because oh, if you'd spent $15,000, confirmation bias would be strong. You would hope to hell that it's good. And luckily it is. This is amazing. These are both amazing. As I said, M scale is going to talk uh, be talked about in its own video because it's impressive in its own right. We're focusing on the DAC. What do you get when you buy a chord DAC? Now, Chord DACs are quite expensive, and that's for two reasons. One is that they're not built in China or anything. These are designed and built in the UK. That has cost. And the second reason is that though they don't use off-the-shelf chips. They don't use AKM. They don't use ESS. They make their own with an FPGA. An FPGA is a field programmable gate array. It's a microprocessor that you can code to do whatever you like. That's true for all of their DACs, from the cutest to the Dave. And it does things a bit differently. Most Delta Sigma DACs will have one switching element that switches on and off really, really fast, and then a low-pass filter averages out those on-off pulses to produce the analog waveform. That generates switching noise, and the way Chord has overcome that is by using a pulse array. Chord uses a pulse array design, which means they have a series of 10 staggered switching elements instead of the typical one that a normal Delta Sigma DAC will have. This helps to effectively combat jitter and switching noise, because each rising edge of data coincides with a falling edge. This helps to reduce both signal-dependent patterns in distortion, as well as noise floor modulation. That's the first thing that chord DACs do a little bit differently. The second is oversampling. All Delta Sigma DACs have to oversample. They take the 44.1 kHz information you give them, and they add extra samples in between to bring it up to a higher sample rate. All Delta Sigma DACs do that, and the maths you use, the oversampling filter that you use to do that matters. The number of coefficients that that filter has, called the tap count, matters. Chord goes above and beyond in that regard. Most DACs will have a tap count of a few hundred to maybe a few thousand. The Cutest has 49,000, the Dave has 160,000, and the M Scaler brings it up to over a million. That's a lot, and it makes a difference. Because the biggest thing you'll notice whenever you try a chord DAC is the separation. Separation is a standout feature of the chord house sound. I've been judging this with the Hypermancer's Vara on the benchmark AHB2. That's my reference setup. And let's talk about the separation. So the intro song was Iron. All the songs I'm using are in the description. You can go and have a look. Are You Serious by Andrew Bird. You don't just hear separate vocalist, drums, guitar. You hear each drum. You hear every strum of the... The physical separation that chord DACs provide is really impressive. This is a step up over the cutest. You can pick stuff out so much easier than any other Delta Sigma DAC. A little bit easier than the cutest. That's not a dig at the Dave. That's just that the cutest at $2,000 was already doing an amazing job at that. Separation on chord DACs is just about unparalleled unless you start getting into R2R stuff. In terms of Delta Sigma DACs, chord DACs provide, in my opinion, the best separation I've heard. Maybe not DCS. DCS might still beat them there, but that's about it. Staging. 
The biggest issue I had with the Cutis was staging. It didn't stage very well on its own, and the Hugo 2 didn't either. I've not tried the TT2, I would love to, but I haven't done yet. With the M Scaler, the Cutis staged a lot better. This, though, stages a lot. This stages immensely when you put the M Scaler on it. Track I'm going to use for this is Desire by Bob Moses. Almost all of Bob Moses' stuff has a ton of staging to it. Those vocals sound huge and distant, and you can hear the reverberations of the bell. Everything is staged beautifully. Another good track is, uh, I'm not even going to try and pronounce this. There's a link in the description. Have a look there. That's by Wardrunner. This is different because a lot of DACs, a lot of headphones can and speakers can stage well by just making stuff airy, by making stuff sound big and having good upper treble extension, but there's not much stuff and you really need good stuff to make low end stage well, to make low end stage properly, but still be fast and forceful and controlled. And this does that beautifully. Low end timbre and presentation overall is a really strong point of this DAC. It does not have the same issue that the Cutis did with being a little bit too soft in that regard. Macro dynamics are great on the Dave. This track has this sort of thundering drum and the thunder at the beginning as well. On the Cutis, it's just soft and a little bit closed in. On lesser decks, it's good and everything else sounds big, but the bass is still a little bit close. And it can vary between soft and fast. Like the ADI 2, for example, most stuff in this track stages well, but the low end still close to you. This stages everything properly. In the Cutis review, I talked about how sometimes it came across a little bit too polite. The track I used as an example was Tense by Bronson. And the reason for that is this was developed or produced on a plane. And the guy deliberately left it in a almost deliberately poorly mastered state. The synth at the end is intentionally dirty and aggressive. The cutest tried to fix that. It tried to make it sound more refined. And in the process, you lose a lot of the excitement this track has. The Dave does not do that. The Dave has no mercy. It will pass through whatever you are giving it. If you're giving it something like this... It's just aggressive and fast, and it just makes you want to bang your head and dance. It's fantastic. There is no softness, there's no politeness with this. But it can be polite when you ask it to. That's the thing with this. The cutest, the issue I had was that it felt like it was trying too hard to impart its own signature. I don't get that at all with the Dave, and anything I throw at it works really well. To pick something a little bit more delicate, this is Below the Asteroids. This is from EVE Online, actually. And if I go two minutes in... The flute, the strings, every subtle nuance and every little delicate aspect is perfectly presented. It doesn't overdo anything. It doesn't under... It impress... It's... It doesn't try to fix something like the cutest, and it doesn't have to try to sound more impressive than it is like some cheaper DAX. It just is impressive. It doesn't feel like anything's in the way. It doesn't feel like it's trying. It just is. doesn't matter what you throw at it. If you throw EDM, orchestral, pop, folk, whatever, it just does it. Timbre is represented beautifully on this. Let's go to Death is the New Sex by Tongue. This has some good vocals and some good guitar as well. Crack 
crackle burst from the record player. This sounds incredibly convincing. This sounds incredibly natural, realistic. The spaciousness and the positioning within the stage is phenomenal. This is an incredibly impressive DAC, not just in raw resolution, but how it actually presents the music to you in a three-dimensional manner. Timbre is excellent of everything. Strings, vocals, drums, low-end timbre, as I mentioned before. It's just great. It's brilliant. And it doesn't have the softness that the Cutis and Hugo 2 have. It doesn't have the brightness and aggression that some cheaper decks have, or ESS decks particularly, I find that happens. It just does whatever you ask it to. I, I've mentioned the low end a few times. One of the things that really continues to impress me with this, and this relates to both timbre and spatial presentation, nothing ever feels like it's impeding on other elements of the music. This is It's Also Incredibly Loud by Glass Animals. At the end of this track, there is a section where you've got quite a lot of low end stuff going on, on cheaper decks and on the cutest even, it feels a little bit like that is imposing itself over the rest of the music. It ends up sounding a touch claustrophobic. That's not the case with the Dave. You get this weight and force and resolution without anything covering anything else up. So if I just skip straight to it. On other DACs, this can sound a little bit too busy. It can be harder to pick something out, especially with the low end. The low end often is the thing that bleeds into other areas the most. You know, sibilance is going to make you wince, but low end can actually cover stuff up. It's not doing that here. It's separate and defined and texturally beautiful. I'm really struggling to find anything negative to say about the sound. With the cutest, I had the problem that it was a little bit too polite at times. This, it doesn't have that. The only criticism I can find for this DAC is that it's not the best DAC I've heard. The DCS Vivaldi beats it, but that's a stupid amount of money. And then the Hollow May beats it, which I'll talk about in its own video. And that's half the price. So that's a bit of an elephant in the room. But there's nothing wrong with this. And if you like the Chord House sound, this is an incredible option. This is phenomenal. I like the Dave. But then we come to the other question. Do you get an M scaler for your Dave? How does the Dave sound alone? It's been a little bit tricky to AB this for a couple reasons. One is that whilst I can switch to 44.1 kilohertz instantaneously like that, and so I can immediately hear what's missing, when I go back to 768 kilohertz, it takes a few seconds to realize that it's on dual BNC and switch over to 768 kilohertz again. So I can't AB by adding the M scaler, but I can immediately hear what's missing when it's taken away. But that's better to have it that way anyway, so that's fine. What happens when you take the M scaler away from the Dave? Well, the Dave is still an impressive DAC on its own, but it's not as impressive. Let's use one of the tracks we used before. Let's go to uh, Desire. When I turn the M scaler off, suddenly the stage comes in a little bit. It's still good. It's still a lot better than the cutest. It's still a lot better than most decks, but it does fall in just a bit. The separation still excellent. The resolution takes a slight hit. The problem I have is that having heard these two together, the Dave alone is less impressive. What I should have done, in hindsight, is listen to the Dave on its own first. But I didn't. I plugged it into the M scaler. And so when you take the M scaler away, when you take that slight hit to the sound stage and the resolution, and a little bit to the separation, but not too much, this is less impressive. Now, A being this against the cutest, a being this against a cheaper DAC like the ADI-2, it's not 
a question. This is better. This is still a fantastic DAC. The question is, is this a $10,000 DAC on its own? And I'm not entirely sure it is, but this is definitely a $15,000 package. That's how much of an upgrade the M-Scaler makes. If you are buying a Dave, you should get an M-Scaler. I don't know that you should get a Dave on its own. I love the Dave. I think this is fantastic. I wish it looked better. And I really think that if Cord sold just a plain black box version of each of their products, they'd sell hundreds and thousands more. I don't like the aesthetics. I love the sound. This sounds phenomenal, and I can't find anything to criticize. It fixes all the complaints I had about the cutest. It does almost everything better than any other Delta Sigma deck I've heard, with the exception of the Vivaldi. The only thing I can find to criticize this is that it's not the best deck I've heard. And that wouldn't be a problem if it was the best deck I'd heard, other than stuff which is more expensive, like the DCS Vivaldi. But there is one DAC that's better than this, for half the price, and that's the Hollow May. Rob Watts says he doesn't like R2R DAX, and the reason he gave for that is that he doesn't think R2R DAX handle low-level signals correctly. That used to be the case. It used to be that making an R2R DAX was really, really hard to do to any level of accuracy. Nowadays, that's not true. On the left of the screen, you can see the minus 90 dB sine wave from the Dave, and on the right, you can see the minus 90 dB sign from the May. As you can see, that low-level argument no longer really holds true. So, I'll be talking about the May in its own video. There's a lot to talk about there. That is the only reason that I would hesitate with this. It's that I think there's one option currently that I've heard that is better than this for less money. Other than that, though, this is amazing. This is fantastic. And if you want British, if you're not happy buying something from China, if you're happy, if, if you want to buy British, you want to buy American, whatever, and you want cord, or you just want the cord house sound, then get this. This is fantastic. But it's a lot of money. If the money isn't an issue to you, if you don't have a budget, then this is a fantastic option. Don't buy this blind. You shouldn't buy something this expensive based on what someone on the internet is saying or a YouTube review. I'm not here to tell you you should buy this, that you should place an order right now. I'm here to tell you that you should go to a dealer and you should give this your attention and then decide. When buying something this expensive, you should do a home demo. Please don't buy this blind. I'm here to tell you that I think you're going to love it and I think it's worth looking at if you are genuinely considering it. But do listen for yourself before shelling out enough money to buy a car. Thank you very much to my first Diamond Patreon supporter, Mammal. You're a legend. If you'd like to support me on Patreon, you can do so at the link in the description. Any money I get from Patreon is just going into buying audio stuff to review. Anything I buy will then be resold, so if I buy something for 500 resell it for 400 then it's only cost 100 and the money goes a lot further. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. Cheers.